Hey there. Welcome. And maybe to some people, welcome back. Um, if you're part of the session that just that just ran from three to three thirty on uh, on getting your foot in the door and career edge um, and the paid internship program that we offer. Welcome back. Um, two sessions. Hopefully, you're not tired of my face and my voice um, back to back. Um, is uh, can everyone hear me? Are we are we good? I know that there's some people in here. I assume. Um, hey, hi again. We're back. Yes, nice, awesome. Um, all right. So uh, in this session, uh, I think the first one. Obviously, if you were part of it, we we, we talked about internships and and getting your foot in the door and kind of at an overall. Um, uh you know general general sense so with the second one i'd like to offer maybe some more tangible advice that is uh, part of something that is seems to be very um much part of our new lives um and doesn't seem to be going away any time anytime soon and that's video interviewing and networking um the, the topic that I chose, uh, I called it video interviewing and networking, but these are all topics that even if you're having a Zoom call with your grandmother, um, they're, they're all good topics to, uh, to keep in mind um, just in this new form of communication because, um, you know, even if, even if we can't have these conferences and things like that, I can't even talk to colleagues face to face now. So I'm using these, these tips and these tricks every day when I'm having conversations with people. So um, the video interview and and, and video networking is something obviously that's existed for quite a while. Like we, we've been familiar with FaceTime, with Skype, with Zoom calls, that, that's been around, um, but not at this level. So um, as it becomes part of your day-to-day -day life and you're, you're you know, having more of these interactions, you'll learn some stuff on the way as you go and you'll learn some mistakes that, you, uh, that can be made. And hopefully those mistakes um, I've made and that you don't have to, and I can kind of relay them, relay them back to you because um, even in being experienced with working from home, remote work, um, having meetings all the time, I wasn't used to quite the volume that I was going to be having these calls, you know, come or back in March and April. So I learned a few things very early on, um, it, just in terms of preparedness and things like that, that, that hopefully I can, um, you know, pass along to you guys um, to, to make sure that, you know, Definitely things that you could be doing, and also very importantly, things to not do that could very much uh, ruin your chances and, and completely take you out of uh, candidacy for a position, or just in any conversation, it can be kind of detrimental um, to um, to how you present yourself. So, the uh, the first um, the first thing that I'll say, I've kind of uh, when I was looking at how to present this or how to give maybe the, the best possible advice. I've broken it down at sort of um, four points, I guess. So the, the first point um, that, I'll, that I'll talk about is very simple. And, and most of what I talk about seems obvious and is very, very logical. And that's the point is that it's these are very much little details that if not paid attention to can completely um, ruin things for you, but if paid attention to, you might not necessarily notice them, um, but it makes sure that things can run smoothly. So first, if anyone's been part of this, I'm sure when we when we came into the conference here, one thing that you're always getting told is the technical component. So make sure that you have a stable internet connection. Um, make sure your audio is working. Make sure you have a functioning webcam. If you don't have those things, um, try borrowing um, you know those those things from a friend or from someone who does um, have those things. Make sure that if you're on a laptop that your battery life is good, um, that you know, you're know you not right at the end, right before the call starts, and then you're scrambling to find your charger and everything like that, and then 10 minutes in, um, your battery dies. So those, uh, those technical things that, that are kind of make sure that everything flows naturally, that um, you know, that there isn't an issue that could have been very easily avoided. Things like um, closing tabs, other browsers, other software that you might have open, anything that would be potentially slowing down your system or, or imposing um, in that process, you really wanna make sure that you're set up for that. Um, in the same way that you'd wanna make sure that you're set up to leave on time for an in-person interview, make sure that you know the bus route or you know the driving directions or anything like that, it's the exact same. There are due diligences that need to be taken. Um, and again, sounds obvious, but sometimes they're not taken and it ends up kind of sneaking up behind you and then and really ruining things. Um, 
with with that being said, in this new age of, of, of COVID and the pandemic and the way that we communicate now, I'd say that people are probably a little bit more forgiving now than they were maybe, you know, six months ago if you're doing a video interview. So um, there's certain, depending on the context, I think that you can, you know, get away with a few things that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise um, in, in a previous time. But I'd say within those cases, if there is something that may be audio spotty, internet connection, just no matter what you do, it's not great. Um, I would start the call with that sort of stuff and just kind of lay that out there. Hey, by the way, I hate Rogers. It's terrible. They're giving me horrible, horrible service throughout the whole quarantine. I'm not, that's not my case, but you, you kind of let people know that that might be something that occurs. Please bear with me. We'll, we'll get right back to it just so that they know what they're expecting, right? So that technical piece is first and foremost, easiest to implement, easiest to make sure it's good. Um, and then you can kind of, you can kind of go forward. So th this is all stuff pre pre call. So the other thing is, is, is your surroundings. So make sure that you have a quiet space, that there's not a lot of distractions and we'll get to distractions in a little bit, but um, a quiet space with a clean background. Um, so here I have, you know, mainly white. I can't avoid that. I have my, uh, my record shelf here, a collection of vinyl records, something like this. While, while a part of a background isn't necessarily distracting, at times it even gives me an opportunity to, to very quickly talk about some of my favorite vinyl records and music and things like that and kind of build rapport almost at the beginning of a call and, and, and really build that uh, that relationship because someone might also have you know a shared interest in vinyl records and then we can talk about it for a minute or two, but that's it. You don't want to be in a situation where your background is then creating conversation um, and that conversation takes up more than um, more time than you have for the interview and more time than you have to actually present your skills and present yourself in the best way that you could. So if it's unavoidable, I'd say things like books, records, you know, simple kind of office, um, and anything that would be appropriate to have in an office, I'd say is okay. But for the most part, general rule, keep it clean, um, you know, no mess, definitely. Um, dressing professionally is very important. I, I would say that in Today's climate, it's also a little bit different with um, the types of roles that people are going for. So I know that typically, you know, for um, for men anyway, the, the shirt and the tie and the complete formal look is something that um, has been sort of a common practice in interviews. Um, I'd say it really depends nowadays on the position that you're going for. If I'm a, you know, a, a graphic designer and I have a role that I'm um, going to be video and interviewing for um, at a creative agency or something like that probably won't want to go in a complete full suit and tie. Um, but if I'm in finance and looking for a position, say in finance or um, in, in any of those professional segments, uh, consulting for sure, shirt and tie, um, that you know, full business formal um, look is good. But either way, professionally dressed, well-kept, um, and, and really sort of presenting yourself as you would if you were leaving the house. Um, the, the, type of work and that type of presentation isn't just good for um, for the video interview, but it also helps really when we're all quarantined and we're all at home, doing those little things to take care of your personal um, appearance and your physical, your, your physical appearance rather, and, and kind of putting yourself together in those ways. It can be very tough. I know my sweatpants have been my best friends the, the past uh, four months, but um, doing those types of things in the morning and, and kind of really almost mimicking what it would be like if you were going to work, even if there's no work to go to, um, is very helpful. So definitely bring that, you know, best foot forward when, when doing video interviews for sure. And it's not hard. You guys can see this much of me. I am, I promise I am wearing pants, but if I didn't want to, it didn't have to, it doesn't take a lot to prep, you know, this square here. So um, really make sure that that's, that's done because again, it is something small and for employers, hiring managers, that's exactly the thought. It's how hard is it to clean up? Right, it's not that hard. You're telling me if you haven't done that that you don't really care too much, right? Um, the I'd say so. Part of that physical, your surroundings and prepping that is also making sure that you're really getting rid of distractions. So things like pets, loud noises. Some you can avoid, some you can't avoid. I live in downtown Toronto. There's a lot of construction. I might pick it up. I've done my job to at least close my windows make that a little bit easier. Um, but things like pets, if you can, I know it's heartbreaking to, you know, to leave a pet in a, a room for half an hour with the door closed. If you can do that, that'd be great. Um, you know, not having a, a chihuahua walk across the, the keyboard, um, surprisingly, and lick your face. That while, while, while it's cute, it, it, again, it takes away from, you know, your points and the things that you're trying to put forward. Um, 
people in the background is usually not great um, or, or are messy backdrops. Um, I'd say the biggest thing that I've learned actually is a piece and just I, I have, you know, minimum three to four of these calls um, daily and and living with my partner, I've, I've learned uh, to really be transparent with her when those calls are happening um, and what those calls will look like, what they're se how serious they'll be, whether it's if I'm talking to an employer partner and I kind of need the silence, if I'm talking to a coworker that already knows my partner um, and knows her, I can say, hey, don't worry about it. You can even pop in and say hello if you want. But really, if you are living with other people, with children, with loved ones, with partners, really being transparent and, and, and open about, hey, in half an hour from now, I have this, or an hour tomorrow, I have this thing that's really important for me, and I really need that concentration, and, and, and creating that communication, because I've learned the hard way a few times where I've gotten upset because of noise or things like that, and I didn't actually have the courtesy to even tell my partner that it was happening, and then it kind of is, that's on me, I didn't say anything, and how would, you know, well, my partner's great. She's not a mind reader. <laughs> you know, she can't she can't predict that uh, that I'm going to be on on video with uh, on an important call. So, doing that due diligence with, with, with the, the technical component, the surroundings, your physical environment, really making sure that those distractions, like turning off your phone, um, putting it on silent, all those things are things pre. Um, interview, pre-phone call, whatever it is, whether it's a networking session, uh, maybe you've connected with someone on LinkedIn and just want to pick their brain, as they say, um, and have a virtual coffee. Um, these are all things that uh, that should be put into place and really, really be paid attention to um, as you're going on. And I actually, I, I, I hope that there's notes being taken. I can actually maybe even share with Rachel sort of my top points here. I actually purposely um, was going to go all on video so that it could just be this kind of, um, you know, this channel since I am doing video interviewing tips and, and networking tips. So um, if you're interested, I can share these points um, with Rachel and, and um, she can uh, sort of, you know, spread them as, as she, she see fits. Um, before we get into the during, um, one final thing that I, I found I, I've made the mistake of um, and hopefully you don't have to, is logging on early. So I've, I've had that where you, you, you get a certain sense of comfort. Hey, I'm at home. The call's at, you know, the call's at two, was it 152? Oh, it's worlds away. Oh my God, like I have all the time in the world. Uh, okay, now seven minutes. All right, now six minutes. I still have all the time in the world. And then 159 comes up and I'm scrambling. I realize I don't have the login. Oh, it's on Zoom. I thought it was on Teams. I have to open Zooms up, Zoom up. And now all this time I was prepped. I was ready. Um, and ended up showing to the call at 202 and I'm two minutes late, right? And my team members are like, what are you doing? This is, you know, so logging on early and making sure that there's none of those surprises, the same way that there's no physical distractions, making sure that there's no surprises like in a software update or something that, that you know, um, that might impede it on your, uh, arrival on time to to the caller to the interview that's very important same way like you'd show up to an in-person interview 10 15 minutes early right um this is the you know technological equivalent of it um, so that, that's sort of the final piece uh, beforehand um the the few tips that i have during I, I won't be getting into you know typical interview thing like we won't really talk about what questions to expect or anything like that because i think that's a whole other subject and i, I just want to give some very quick tips for video um communication. Uh, one thing that I did not think about at all for a long time was the elevation of my laptop, right? So when things start, here, I'll change it up. So when we started out, I'm here, I'm in my chair, I'm very well poised, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting back, my back's in my chair, and I can speak very fluidly, and, and you guys have a sense for that too, and it almost... Um, it almost feels like you're at the other side of my table here with me because we're on the, kind of on the same level. Um, when I remove what I have this just little plastic box here and I'm down here and I kind of have this sense, I was doing this for quite a while and all while it's, it's good, we can communicate this way and it's great. It's not a great look. I, you know, I'm fortunate enough to not maybe have a big double chin or anything like that. But it, no one really wants to be seeing someone like looking down at them or kind of in this. And I'm sure we've all had calls like this, right? Where we've, we've been with people that are sort of hunched over or whatever. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If I'm talking with my colleagues and coworkers, I won't set up a box or anything like that. But if it's in a position where I want to really express the right message and make sure that my communication is clear and coming across properly, um, I will 
find a way to elevate my laptop. I'll even push it back a little bit. And doesn't that look better? I might be wrong completely, but to me, I, I found that very, very, um, you know, important to, to make that, that tweak. Um, I'd say that also it, 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 in the same line of this is the sort of perspective of your computer and of the camera and everything like that. Um, you can do many of these things on your phone and, and tablet. You're not necessarily going to be doing them on your laptop. I would definitely, definitely say make sure to stabilize um, the the, lab, the tablet or the iPhone, or sorry, not iPhone only, the, the smartphone in a way that you're not the one that's holding it and then having that sort of like shaky experience where it kind of looks like you're on the move and everything like that. Find a way to create a seat where you can just kind of prop up the, the phone or the tablet or anything like that so that it's not moving and that you can um, you know you can sit there and and, uh, and, and present yourself to the, to the best of your ability so um, that that really that, that's almost a technical piece but I'd say that that's very important when the, when the call starts is to have that stuff lined up um, the the other the other piece that's really big in that line of just visual and how people see you I'd say is posture um, so I have a tendency to kind of hunch over and when you're listening you sort of hunch and and a great uh a yoga term is to take your shoulders out of your ears so really make sure that that posture is good i know for a long call it could kind of be tricky standing upright or you might have a you know, different preference i think it's important to be comfortable um but that to not express boredom or you know um discomfort in any sort of way right so to not just be constantly sort of shifting and moving and uh -huh, yeah but like stay put it's it's not you know hopefully it's not a two-hour call or anything like that and hopefully it's a position where you can i'd say still comfort is first and foremost if there is you know if it is an issue to to do that then obviously you won't but those are all those are sort of the posture and, and those things are very important in presenting yourself in the best ability um the two uh two or three final things that I'll uh, that I'll talk about are eye contact so if you notice I haven't really been looking at myself here on the screen or on like uh, I haven't looked at the chat really but the chat hasn't been um, active but I haven't really been doing much of this right I've been looking into the camera the whole time um, this does take a little bit of a a little bit of experience and a little bit of repetition when you're speaking it's a little bit easier to um, you know to, to to look into the camera i try to do it even when the other person is speaking so that it looks as though i'm i'm making that eye contact rather than rather than that right um so that eye contact into the webcam is very very important and i'd say if you have notes too to kind of make sure that those notes in your eye contact also reflect that so i have a bunch of stickies on the, on the, the few different tips that i've had but i've made sure to stick them all across near the webcam so that when I'm looking at it, my eyes aren't diverging too much and it doesn't look like I'm distracted, right? So I've kind of put my sticky notes here and can kind of very quickly see, and obviously it does, um, it's noticeable that I'm not looking directly into the camera, but it's not too bad, right? Um, so th th that, that also comes, my other point in sort of that eye contact is, Usually when we're taking notes, I think it's more common now to take notes on your phone or on your laptop. If you're in a video interview, I would very much make it clear or, or make it obvious that you're taking notes by pen and pad, because when you're writing them down, it, it very much has that, you know, you can tell what you're doing. I can tell that I'm writing notes, even if you're just doodling. Um, it, it, that visual of writing is there versus even if you're taking notes on what the person is saying, Doing that and hearing, you know, hearing the keyboard go off, and hear, it, it looks like you're in a side chat. It looks like you might, you know, be talking about something else. You might be playing a video game, whatever it is. It's it's a bit distracting. So I think the the, the pen and the pad versus the laptop, definitely not the phone. That kind of, you know, doing one of these, that's not good. Um, I'd say that's one time where really it's kind of funny because we're kind of using this virtual context, but the the pen and the pad I think is very important there. Um, and then the final uh, final piece that I'll mention that, that is very important during is to project well and make sure that you're heard clearly because sometimes there are connectivity issues. So to very much enunciate, project well, and remember to pause. So when you get a question from a hiring manager, from an interviewer, wait a few seconds for them to be finished. Wait, treat everything with that kind of patience and, and remember to really not jump in um, because we've all at this point, I think, been on you know Zoom calls, whether they're with friends, peers, um, interviews, where people tend to cut one another off. It's brutal in real life.
when people cut one another off and aren't necessarily listening and just waiting for their chance to speak. But it's much, much worse on a on a virtual call where you know it it just sounds worse. You can't pick up on no you uh, no sorry uh, uh, you, and then everyone just kind of goes like this. And then everyone at, at once then decides to start talking again, right? So um, I definitely make sure to be very patient and deliberate with how you're communicating, and that uh, that projection of your voice and of your you know of your of your style and your communication, along with appropriate pauses um, after you know each statement or after the questions that they've asked, and really make sure that there's no delay, there's you know no lag, nothing like that. That pause will. Um, We'll really make sure that that's that's clean and that. And I know it could. That's another one of those things that it takes repetition because sometimes when it's silent on these calls, um, you know, it, it could be a little uncomfortable. And, and so just being comfortable with that one to two seconds of silence is totally okay. And I know it sometimes feels like thirty seconds of silence when it's there, but um, just being comfortable with with those you know confident pauses. Um, so. I know that was a lot of info. I hope that uh, you know you, you gained some valuable uh, insight into video interviewing and just kind of tips and how to be successful. And um, I think there's there's a lot left to to your creativity, to the context of the positions that you're in. I just wanted to provide um, you know these tips that are so 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 simple to implement, but many people don't do them, myself included. I don't. I have a list here of you know. 18 points or whatever it was, 19 points. I don't do them every single time, um, but I think at, they're all points that are, you know, you, you don't want it to be based on your internet connection. You don't want your rejection to be because, you know, a, a pet walk through the, through the screen. So things that you can avoid, make sure that those things are taken care of and they're set and you'll have more mind and you'll probably have a better um, interview and a better video call. Um, any questions? I know there's probably less questions on this one than, than the last session on internships and, and your foot in the door and things like that. But um, anything that's kind of, I'd love to hear maybe even just some experiences that other people have had. Have you found that you know this is helpful? Are you implementing some of these in your own um, video calls? Have you been having video calls? I'd love to hear more. If we have time, I know that we're running out. I know it's the whole thing's done at four. We can also just stop and I can send Rachel all the points. Cool. I'll uh, I'll take that as unless they're uh, yeah oh yeah that that's a great that's a great great question and the um, I know that a lot of times the pre-screening or um, as we say one one way videos um, is is pretty tough sometimes it's way way harder and it feels a lot more unnatural. Um, so I'd say do everything that you can to kind of mimic that real conversation. Really make sure that you are um, aware of the time that you have set out, the time that you know you can kind of consolidate all your points in, that you don't run out of time. I once had a video on demand or one way video where um, I was talking about how good I am at time and then ran out of time on my answer. So really making sure that that's all set up and uh, and good to go. And yes, they, they oftentimes are reviewed by, by a person who is sort of using that as a screen tool. Um, the, uh, the video um, once recorded can be, so are you talking uh, originally on our website? On our, um, on our platform, once you've recorded a video, that video does stay with your profile. If there's certain, um, we, we do review them as well. So as our team is reviewing and notices, maybe the dog did run through your, you know, your screen or there was some loud noises or whatever it may be, we'll allow you to retake them. But for the most part, we, we try to have that one profile um, when you're invited to, to take it, you take it and that hopefully is your, your, your best attempt at, um, at the video. Um, but if there's something where you truly, truly feel like, you know, I absolutely messed it up, like these people need to know, it needs to be reset, it needs to be burned and, and destroyed, um, you can let us know, you can contact our support team. Uh, so, and I was just reading uh, Basil's uh, comment there on, on the uh, on the comment. So, thank you. Um, 
I think that's it. If, if no one has any other questions, again, I'll send all the points. Um, I, I hope this stuff was was obvious, actually, because it's it, it should be obvious. It should be logic. But I hope that you implement it in uh, in your experiences with video interviews. Again, like I mentioned on the on the last session, um, I'm on LinkedIn. Please add me. Um, I'd love to hear about how this has gone. If you've maybe implemented some of these tips and tricks into your um, into your process, and maybe they've changed things, maybe they haven't. Um, I'd love to hear more, though. If uh, you know, if you want to connect. All right. So I think that's it for me. I'll uh, I'll talk to you guys later. I'll uh, I'll see you all on LinkedIn. Um, final question. I'm not sure if the recording will be available. I assume so, but I don't want to promise anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that'd be a good good question for Toronto Jobs. But um, thank you everyone, and, and a, a huge huge thank you to TorontoJobs.ca for making this happen, for allowing me to for allowing me to speak and, and uh, give you guys some of these tips. So I'm sure I'll be seeing you again at, uh, at future events. Thanks everyone.